I'm well, Senna. Mm. Well, let me just ask you. I know you have uh, seen our topic. Two things. We are talking about relevance of counselling and whether it makes counsel uh, marry it, it. It contributes to the success of the marriage. I love radio what do you say? Thank you very much. Let me say, cherish uh, good morning to discerning listeners of the station and viewers. Um, just to start with, let me help Aisha. The first people say who counsel Adam and Eve. God gave them counsel. And he started with the individual, Adam. It is not good for you to be alone. I will make it for you. And that is where counseling began. Consultation. Counseling is helping one to make an informed decision. So somebody wants to make a decision based on the logistical, equipped environment they leave. So counseling is not advice. Counseling is not deciding for, but it's helping you to make an informed decision based on your environment and your capacity as a male or a female. So God was their counselor. Now, the fact is that it is never said anywhere that because you went through counseling, your marriage must work. No. Rather, it helps you to wish that it works and have the capacity to live when it is not working. To wish that it works. Yes. And if it's not working, to know how to live. All that is part of the marriage. So there's not yes. an insistence on ensuring the marriage works. No. You see, the first thing is that before you take a decision to marry, you need to go for counseling before you have somebody to marry. So I hear people saying premarital counseling. Premarital counseling is not when you find Aisha you want to marry her, or when Aisha finds George. No. Premarital counseling is when Aisha deems it straight that I am having a change in my body, and that change will be connecting to the opposite sex. How do I manage myself? And for the opposite sex. So, you don't walk to a counselor when you have decided to marry Aisha. If you come to me with a, a mindset of, I want to marry Aisha, we've been going out for seven years, and we want you to counsel her so we can continue the journey, then you have already finished it, and you want me to tell you which bed is this as a ticket of the feathers. But what to me, discovering who you are, so I help you prepare what we call the personality checklist. First and foremost, if you don't know yourself, you wouldn't know how to use yourself for what you want to do. This is our problem in marriage. Okay. So the very first point of counseling is the person. Yes. Whether it's marriage, it's business, it's whatever. I do corporate counseling for business. Let me give you an example. You know that as we, we are in Radio Gold, if tomorrow morning Radio God wants to paint the studio, they can't just get up and come and paint. We need to have counseling with the people there, not to ask them permission, but to let them have an informed decision because there can be somebody who is allergic to the scent of paint. You don't know. There can be somebody who reacts to a certain form of color. So when it comes to corporate counseling and group counseling, we build their mind. There's something called workstation. And there was a challenge in some company that they said a girl was performing so well. But ever since she's become inhuman, she doesn't want to see anybody. Unfortunately for them, they didn't know the lady so well. So in, as a temporary therapist, when I went into the system, I gave her an opportunity. Then I realized who she was. She was a melancholy compulsive. So she's not ready to mingle with the workstation. And that is why they're giving her four in one in a big office. And she can't operate anymore. 
So everybody thought on paper, on paper, pass them, that's your best salary. No. So the human being must first discover who they are. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Before they make a decision to marry. And that is the importance of counseling. Unfortunately, Aisha will walk to me when she's ready to marry with a guy already in the pool. So they walk to your place and they expect you to address the two of them. I don't address two people in my office. So, because uh, there are issues that Aisha will want to share with me that she has not shared with the, the uh, George. And I'm not the one to tell George this is what Aisha is saying. But I am able to know, I met a guy who says, as for me, I love every woman. And I love them so much, even when they have children. And he wants to marry a guy, a lady. And the lady had a problem with any guy who has a child. But they have been there for three years. And the lady doesn't know the guy has four children with four different women. But she says everything in the world she will take. But she's not ready to marry any man who has a child. But he has been going out with a guy for three years. And they want to plan to marry. They've done everything. And somebody, they had me on one station and they just said, I'm going to try, like I'm a try counselor. So the guy came in in our conversation. I discovered the four children. And said, oh, I'm taking care of them. And have you told the lady? He said, oh, not yet. I said, when do you want to tell the lady? So I think when we have settled everything. I said, but what if she doesn't want to marry him? Because I am informed that she doesn't want to marry a man with a child. Unfortunately for us, the guy lost his mother. And when they went to a bridge for the funeral, family knows that the lady at least should know. And in the interaction, they showed the children to the said girl. She left the bridge to her car without attending the funeral to the end. She discovered it, not through me. And I, am, I was not in the capacity to tell her. And this doesn't mean that Charlie has not been said. No, there are limitations to her. We put in every sign for you to move ahead and go and discover. So don't come to a counselor with already made husband for a rubber stop. But that's typically what happens in our churches. You hold that a, a, a ladies. I love <laughs> This is our problem. And they say cancel is not in your No. No. And the church counseling at times, it has a limitation with professionalism. That's a problem. I'm a pastor. The type of counseling I render in my private office for people who want to marry, it's not what the church organogram gives out. So there's a limitation. Because in the church... You cannot encourage, you, can, you cannot cancel to the point of how you live a marriage. You must cancel oh, yeah, for people to stay in the marriage. Yeah, but unfortunately in my office, I start from divorce. Take you through the seven steps of the legal terms of divorce. And tell you, divorce is part of marriage. I start to divorce. Anybody who has passed through my hand knows what divorce is and understands what it means. For the vow to tell you, the vow says, the last part of the vow under the law says, to death as do part. I explain each one to you. So you are informed. So there are people who walk to me, and I've not even met the guy, but they go back and say, wow, uh, after knowing myself, I don't think Senna is my kind of guy I want to marry. So no, no fight, no quarrel. They pass away before they walk to her. But that's not a church. And unfortunately, the church doesn't have marriage. All the marriages are contracted under the law, under Cap 127. So the church doesn't have marriage. But the dogma we have designed in our churches is making people feel that it is church marriage. But the law is straight. The man of God should be gazetted by the state. The premises should be licensed. And these are the only two things that the law gives us. That is why garden wedding is illegal. Well, beach where they recently a man of God disgraced the clergy by going to stand on a rain at the beach to marry two people. Shame and disgrace. And he thought he was doing the best. How do you carry the mice and you get to a, a beach? The law says no. The place must be registered. The man must be gazetted. 
the time and the venue of the marriage must be written under law. So by which law did you carry the register to a beach? You can do your reception even under the sea. So the church doesn't have marriage. That is why it is wrong for you to hear a church saying that we are planning to marry George Lucas and Aisha. Aisha, sorry, this morning you are in the gate. And then all of a sudden, we realize that Aisha is pregnant. And so we'll marry them. We excommunicate them, put them on the black chair behind the church until she delivers. That is why you can hear people abusing couple who just, a, a, a guy who, who just got married with their wife. And they delivered. And the day they went for the Navy child education in front of their whole congregation of about 450 in the big church. They said they, are, they were calculating the day they got married. The and by the calculation, the wife had delivered earlier, which means she was pregnant before she came for the wedding. And for that matter, they had to discipline them. And they were disciplined in that day of education in front of the church. Then the ladies BP started going up. So I got into the story because the lady was brought to the hospital because of breastfeeding. And the baby was not seen through with it. Out of that, I investigated. And she said, this is her pain. And this is the reason why. So she had what we call the postpartum depression. Not because of any delivery inconveniences, but because they were disciplined for getting pregnant whilst she was being married. And I said, which of the laws in this country prevents a man of God not to bless marriage? or to contract marriage because of what is said. No, no. Hmm. Oh, okay, so now you say the individual must come to you first. So what if the very first time you meet the person, the person is holding, uh, so I'm holding a woman's hand to your office. What do you do? Don't worry. I deal with you as individual. I don't deal with you as a two. Because what is the low cost? The two of you are not together. <laughs> so you, you have to separate the two of us. I separate the two of you. I deal with one person first, and the second person comes. You feel two different faults. Hmm. I, I don't deal with two people in my own. Even there are many a times that when they are conflict in relationship, I deal with only one party who is available to come. I only ask, between you and Aisha, who do you think is the problem? And you tell me Aisha is the problem. I say, good. Once you know Aisha is the problem, then I want to use you as the solution, and the problem, and the problem is solved. One of the standards in my office is that you don't tell anybody you are coming to my office. It's a practice on the oath of secrecy and privacy. Why? Because I studied father killing in the States, and I realized that most people who kill their spouse based on who they heard them talking to, especially when the ego of a man is bruised. That you took my case to counselor, look at NASA. I've had threats like that before. And I don't even know you it. So I saw a store counselor Luther. And now only counselor Luther, I'm not sure Debbie. Who named Mrs. Aisha Luther? Mrs. Debbie, I'm not sure. And when you phone so, now I'm not sure Debbie. But that's the minister, I'm not sure Debbie. So people who work in my office have a clear cut that you are practicing this thing on the oath of secrecy and privacy. Your individual self, you've gone through life. And you've had more than 10 abortions, 15 abortions. Nobody says if abortion is done well, you can still have more children and even do family planning. No fear about that. There are reasons why somebody will abort. But the fact is, you are coming for counseling and they say full disclosure. I don't know whether they are talking about FUWL disclosure or FOOL disclosure because that is where the challenge is. So open up, let you know that. You are this with this person, you are somebody going out with this one, and then says who? It is you who want to find closure to whatever you have gone through. So you enter into a new relationship, well informed. So you don't go and stand in front of your husband and say that the boyfriend, the guy I was going out with when you came to buy me, I went to Ghana and I saw that his life is so bad. So I want to go back and go and use my document to go and marry him so that he will have life. Hmm. You're a stupid woman. How long should counseling before marriage take? There is no time bound until the person has fully discovered themselves. So if it will take you 10 years to discover yourself, then you are waiting 10 years to get married. That's what I'm saying. Now you don't walk to my office prepared to marry you. You walk to my office discovering yourself if you can marry. <laughs> mm. Counselor, That's thank the you. the problem we have. <laughs> so they walk to you and say, in six months, 
My dad is going back. He's in the military in America. So help us marry. And I say, I'm sorry. In my place, I don't have a rubber stock marriage <laughs> procedure. Because you walked to me and I realized that you don't have a connection with your father. You walked to me and doing the discovery, I realized that you have a backlog of challenges that you have. And so we have to deal with you first. Discover to recover. So that we will know you are wholesome, you are correct, you are sane, you know your clinical condition, you work to us, you know how your health status is, you know how your compatibility, because somebody works to you and is an SC person, person, let's refer to because in my place, when we start with the counseling, you go for a medical screening, you individually. Then, you see, I think my problem is because I am medically inclined, religiously inclined, psychologically inclined. So my counseling package is different. You have to do your medical, not because you have a man to marry. You should know your electro forces as you are sitting in front of me. Know your blood grouping. Know your fertility level. Know your sperm count level. Discover to recover. So I will not marry you for you to go into marriage and then they say that the man has no sperm. No, he has to work on the sperm before he marries. Because it is capital foolishness to spend money on a woman you get married to, to be running in hospital so that she can have out. It's capital foolishness. Especially when she knows that there were challenges she didn't solve. Because it breaks the union. To be going around with a man, buy him uh, my medicine so that he can have sperm. As he know, he had a dark problem with the stomatosis. These things are done before. It is not prayer. The last thing you consider in marriage is spirituality. It's the last. It's not the first. Because angels are not those getting married. So counseling is very essential. It helps you make an informed decision before marriage. And the funny part is that people don't like postmarital counseling. But once you start life, counseling is with you till you die. Okay, if counselor. In your grace, okay. if you are fortunate, you need a counselor at your graveside so that your ghost will know how to walk him down. <laughs> counselor, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Well, and I always say this. Anytime I talk, I say I'm fully responsible for my comment because this particular small time we spent has saved lives. If you are listening to me and you're making a decision to get married, you want to be a official politician, come for counseling so that you know the type of woman who can be the politician's wife. On 0277, 609 644. Professional compatibility is important. So women, don't just choose anything because you think they look beautiful and handsome and models. On 0277, 609 644. Don't forget, church counseling is different from professional counseling. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, and I wish you the best of the day. That's uh, Councillor George Lutra sharing his thoughts with us on uh, the issue. <laughs>